What's going on everybody, it's Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're going to be continuing the next mine tutorials. I'm really excited about it because last time I know a lot of you were impressed by the capabilities that this device gives you, which basically gives you the information that you get through your visual cortex up to your computer, which allows us to do a lot of different cool things. So today's video we're going to be drilling into the SDK a little bit more. I'm going to show you how the Neuro Manager works, how the Calibration Manager works, and also how we can create our own behaviors by using the Neuro tag. So let's jump into my computer and I start looking at it. So just to give you a walkthrough, if you look at the calibration underscore VR, which is under my scenes, you're going to see that I'm using basically the components that the next mine team put together. And I didn't really see a need for me to change these. They already had it and it already worked. So there's going to be a lot of work if I wanted to implement this from scratch. So I'm just going to use the basically the calibration scene that they provide. And then the difference between this and the other one is that this is going to work with my scenes, right? I'm not going to be using the scenes that they provide here in the examples. I'm using my own and you guys are going to get also these examples available in GitHub. So if we go back into here, the Hub VR is going to allow us to open the calibration scene. I also added a device status, basically tells me if the device is connected, if it's disconnected, if there's any issues with the device. And then once somebody selects, you know, next mind demos, it's going to be the demos that I'm teaching in YouTube, which is basically just going to be opening the prototype VR. So if I go into this component here, you're going to see that the prototype underscore VR is going to be the scene that, that I created that we're going to be implementing for most of this tutorial. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my scripts folder. I have a neural behaviors that I created. I'm going to go ahead and create a new script. To give you an overview of what we just did, we just created a new protected variable, which is basically going to be used to display the confidence value and also any of these methods that get triggered by the neuro tag. The visual object is going to be the object that we're going to be looking at for the neuro tag actual shader, which I'm going to show you how to create in just a minute. The on enable is just going to call the on setup. We can have different things in gear that we wanted to track for other components. For now, I'm just grabbing the visual object and I'm going to be storing that because we're going to be using that for basically other things in the other behaviors. I'm also going to be using the update neuro tag. This is for anything that we wanted to override on anybody that actually inherits from this class. The setup is going to be more like binding information for the other behaviors that we might need. I also added a virtual for the unconfidence change because I know that every single one of these, anybody that inherits from that is going to need it. The same thing with on trigger, on maintain, and on release. So by default, if they, you know, if they want to just display that information, they can. Or if they want to, if they have an overlay, then we're going to be displaying that information on the on the overlay. Another thing that I wanted to do that I didn't do, let's go back in here and I need to add a required component. It's going to allow us so that we don't have to manually type in every single one of those neural tags. So we can do neural tag and then just go ahead and do a control period and bring that namespace. So I can just drag it and drop it here. You're going to see that it adds everything that we need. In this case, I don't have a canvas. Remember, this is the first one that we're creating. So I don't need to associate the overlay value. So in this case, the visual component is going to be this, which is going to be my cube, right? That's the one that we want to look at. But I haven't really created a shader for this. So what I need to do is I'm going to create a new material here. And this is going to be used for a lot of the things that we're going to be doing. So this one, I can just say neuro tag. And we can just say default. I'll just go ahead and go into standard here. Select the shader that next mine provides. I'm just going to do the simulation, which is going to be the default. The texture, though, I want to use the same one that I have already. So I'm just going to select that one. And we need to also associate the simulation texture. So I'm going to need to change the projection. So we're going to be changing this to three planner. The blend value, I'm just going to keep it as zero. And the density, I'm going to set it to four. And I'm going to just do a constant size. This, this is basically based on some of the examples that they have already on their next mine SDK materials. You can look at some of these materials to get an idea of how those are going to work. Now, in this case, I want to display it on this overlay canvas. So really all we need to do is just go ahead and add that component, which is going to be the neuro tag simple. Remember, we also need to change the visual value. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that. And then I also need to change in this case, I want to display that information on the value field. So if you look at the value field here, it's going to be that number that is on the GUI there. And then another thing that we need to do here that I didn't do, we haven't really told the system to 
capture the event when the confidence is changed, right? So if we go back, you remember, this is not gonna get executed magically. We need to tell the neural tag to call into it. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and go back into this one. We're gonna be adding a new, basically a new event. I'm gonna drag and drop this component here and then go into the function. I'm gonna change it to use the unconfidence change. On this one, I'm gonna do something as well similar. We can go ahead and add that, drag and drop this component, go into neural tag simple, and basically just change that event to be the unconfidence change. I don't need the trigger method here, so I'm gonna remove it, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. We're not gonna be doing those just yet. I'll do it in just a minute. So now, what if we wanted to do something cooler, right? We wanna do one where we're changing the color of the cube. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next. Let's go ahead and copy this name here. One of the variables that I'm gonna add is minimum confidence because I wanna know at what point I'm gonna be changing the color. I also wanna change the color to a specific color. The default is gonna be red. I need to track the initial color so that we can change it back to what it was originally. I also want to get basically the render of this cube so that I can change the color. So you can see that I'm overriding the on setup so we can get basically in this case, the visual object. And then I'm getting the render from that component and also the initial color from that component. Then I'm also writing the unconfidence change because not only I want to display that information on the overlay, but I also want to change the color. So I'm adding additional functionality to this. So I'm gonna say, okay, if the value of the, the neural tag is sending me is greater than the minimum confidence, I'm gonna change it into, in this case, gonna be red. Otherwise, I'm gonna change it back to the original color. So I can go into a component. In this case, I'm gonna do neural tag color range. And remember, we need to change the visual. So it's gonna be, the visual is gonna be visual. And then in this case, I don't need the untrigger either. What I need is going to be add one here and then drag and drop this component, go into functions, and I'm gonna do the unconfidence change because that's the one that is gonna allow us to change the color. And then in here, you can also add the value of the canvas, which I'm gonna do. Minimum confidence, we can do 0.25. I think that was the value. And then this is gonna be the color that we're gonna be changing the cube to, which should allow us to now change the color. So we have three different iterations in here. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and implement the neural tag bond. Okay, so this is already implemented. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we're inheriting from neural tag. I also need to track, you know, how long we're gonna be pushing this for. So I just set it to three. And then I also need to specify what the target scale is gonna be. This is so that we can control, you know, how much we're going to be pushing the button. I need to track the initial scale so that we can basically put it back to the original scale. Also that time, so that we know for how long we need to basically track until we're going to be pushing the button. So I need to keep track of that value, I'll show you why. On setup, I'm get, basically getting the initial scale. I'm also setting up the visual object on the parent. And then I'm also doing three different methods that I'm going to, basically we're gonna be looking at that we're gonna get from the neural tag. One of them is gonna be on trigger. The other one is gonna be on maintain and also on release. So it's gonna be the first one that gets triggered as soon as we start focusing on an object. So we're gonna be capturing the seconds, which is gonna be the initial time. And then on maintain, I'm just going to display that information on the GUI. And then I'm going to be tracking, okay, has the time since we started you know, playing, has it been more than, than three seconds? And if it has, then I know that I need to push the button. And then once we release, we're basically gonna set it back to the initial scale. So let's go ahead and click on a component. We're gonna be adding a neural tag button. We're also going to be changing the visual component. And then the other thing that I need to do as well, I'm gonna do the canvas here. I'm gonna be adding that. Let's go ahead and do 0.5. And I already have a couple of values in here that I set up for the position, basically the scale that is going to look right. So I'm gonna do 0.35 there. So it's gonna be 0.35 and then on X and Z and point one on Y. So the next thing that I need to do is we need to bind all the different events. Let me go ahead and remove them all. I'm gonna add them by in order. Okay, so that's that component. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and work on something cooler, which is gonna be our door. So this is similar to the other components I'm inheriting from the Neurotag Simple. I am requiring an audio source, which is something new because I wanna play basically a sound when the door opens. Minimum confidence, because I want to make sure that we're getting a specific value before we open the door. How long are we gonna take to close the door? Target location of the door, initial location, so we can set it back to the original location, whether it's closed or open. Open time, so that I can track how long is it being open for. And then also a reference to the audio source, which I'm getting here on the setup. So I'm getting the initial location, 
the audio source. And then this is so that we know at what point we can close the door. So if the door is not currently closed, which means that it's all the way open and the time has been, you know, more than in this case, two seconds, then I know that I can put the door back in the original location. Also, the door is now closed and I can play the sound again. The other method is the unconfidence change and just basically displaying the value on the GUI and making sure that we are within the threshold of minimum confidence and making sure that the door is not currently closed. And then if that's true, then I'm gonna change the local position to the target location, that way we can open the door. I'm also setting that the door is currently not closed, also tracking the open time, and then basically playing a sound. So if we go back into a neurotag door, let's go ahead and open the a component, click on neurotag door, and then we can basically tell the system what is it that we're gonna be looking at. Remember, we have the visual. So if we go back in here, I'm gonna associate that component. It's gonna be the visual component. And then I'm also going to be adding the canvas value just like I did on the previous. And then the values in here, I'm gonna keep that to 0.15. I'm gonna change the closed door after seconds. We keep the door open for, let's go ahead and do three seconds. Target location, I already have these numbers, which is gonna be three. So basically we're gonna be changing the position of this door three meters away, which is gonna be to the right. And then the last thing that I need to do, we need to remove that component, go ahead and add this. I'm gonna go ahead and associate the unconfidence change, which is the one that is going to allow us to open the door. And then the last example that I'm gonna be looking at doing is going to be this, what I call the Neurotag menu launcher or activator. Okay, so this is done now and I did the same thing that we did before. I call it Neurotag activator. Minimum confidence is going to be the value that we're going to require before we can activate something else. Unity events so that we can, you know, execute other different actions. And also whether we're active or not, I'm just gonna keep track of that in a Boolean value. And then on confidence change, if the value is activated, well, if we already activated this component, then we return. Otherwise we look at the minimum confidence. We execute or basically our method in here and make sure that we check for null. And then we set activated equal to true. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and add that component. Go ahead and go into activator. Remember, we're gonna be adding and associating the visual component. We don't need to do trigger because we didn't implement that. And then what I'll do here, I'll drag and drop this, go into my objects in here, and then let's go ahead and associate that with unconfidence change event. Next, we're gonna do what we've been doing. Let's go ahead and go into the canvas, associate the value. The minimum confidence, we can keep it at 0.1. I think that's completely fine. And then what I also do here on trigger on, this is where we can tell it what to do when we have the minimum confidence rate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go into my menu here, and then let's change this so that we can activate the menu. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go into active. And let's make sure that you check it. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna focus on it, and then as soon as you focus, it's gonna basically show you this messaging here. Hey, if you like what you see, consider subscribing. Okay, so now that we have this set up, there was one thing that I missed doing, and if you remember, I had an audio source, but we haven't really told the audio source what file to play, so. If I go in here, I already have a sound, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop it into the audio clip. Okay, so it looks like everything is working. I can move around. You can see device status is available. We could calibrate it. I already did that. And I can also look at the demos here. So the first one that I'm gonna look at is gonna be this one. This should be now displaying information on the logger over there. Looks like that part is working. Let's go ahead and focus on this one. And you can see confidence value displaying in there. This one is the one about the color, right? We change it to red. So the value is one, it's above the minimum threshold, so it's changing. Let's go ahead and try to focus on this. You guys can see how I can push it. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate here so I can focus. Focus a little bit more and push it, yep. I'll maintain executed, confidence level, it's getting display. There we go. I'm gonna focus in this area and we have light now, which is really cool. And then now, now this looks a lot better. Let's see, there we go. So I think lighting plays a big, you know, an important element on this because without lighting, we couldn't see the flashes and therefore the confidence level was not, was not correct. We can also look at this from far. Let's see if that works. I'm gonna focus on that area and you can see how I push it. I'm gonna focus on that one right now. You can see how that works and I'm gonna focus on that. So I'm, I'm really amazed with this and I hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys have any other questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. And also don't forget to subscribe because that's really gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Thank you guys.